Hey y'all, Coach Unify here, and in this video, we're doing our new moon report for the month of June in the year 2024. Now, we're looking at an app that I have running on my phone called Dat Moon or something like that that shows the current position of the moon. It's waning crescent at 0.4% illuminated. Now, waning crescent means that it's getting smaller. That's the waning part. And the crescent part means that it's already small. So when that 0.4% goes away, it will be a 0% moon. We'll see that on or about the 6th of June when we'll see the 0% moon. But according to the sacred calendar, that's not actually the start of our month. Let's go over here and let's look at Enoch. Now, we're here in Enoch chapter 72, which is all about the inferior luminary called the moon. We see that in verse 1. But then we jump down to the end of the chapter, it starts telling us about the new moon. Well, you see there at verse 5, it says, At the time it appears and becomes to you the beginning of the month, 30 days it is with the sun in the gate from which the sun goes forth. Now, what this is saying is, well, it's describing the new moon. It says, at the time it appears. So, now, this is important to understand because you have to have the appearance of the new moon. That 0% moon that we were looking at over there, at that moon, is actually the end of the month. That's the last day of the month when you have that 0% moon. But for the sacred calendar, like we said, it's when it appears. So let's go back to Enoch. Verse 6 says, Half of it in is a stint seven portions, one half, and the whole of its orb is void of light, except one seventh portion out of the fourteenth portions of its light. And in a day it receives a seventh portion, or half that portion of its light. Its light is by seven portions, and by the half of a portion, it sets with the sun. Now, it's a little bit complicated, but when you come over here and you look at what it's saying at that moon, you can see on the new moon or the 0% moon, there's 0% illuminated. That will be June the 6th. But then on June the 7th, you see that it has 2.5% of the moon illuminated. And if we keep going through, we'll see that the moon will be completely full on the 14th day of the month because it gains one portion of its light every day. And then on the 14th day, it would be 100%. And on the 15th day of the month, it is actually starting to wane again. It will be waning give us then. Verse 7 says, and when the sun rises, the moon rises with it, receiving a half portion of its light. So now let's come back over to our current day as far as that moon is concerned. It's talking about this 30th day or this 30th morning. And on that morning, which would be June the 7th, you see that it's getting that portion of its light. On June the 6th, there's only 0.3 percent of the moon illuminated which is not enough for us to see with our naked eye we see on june the 6th it is zero percent illuminated at 6 a.m that's 0.3 at uh, 6 p.m but at 6 a.m it's zero percent illuminated so that's not the day that it's talking about in verse 7 we have to go to june the 7th when we have the first sliver of the moon to appear there in the morning time and then when we get to the evening time, when it's time to actually go out and see it, there will be 2.6% of the moon illuminated. And that's when a lot of people around the world would be trying to see the new moon because, like I said, it has to appear there. And so many people will be out trying to get a glimpse of it, even reporting out what they see on the evening of June the 7th. And, of course, if they do see it on June the 7th, that would be the beginning of the month. June the 8th would actually be the first day of the month. 
but we'll come back to that. Verse 8 says, on, the, on that night, when it commences its period previous to the day of the month, the moon sets with the sun. Now, this is a little bit tricky uh, for those who are new to this, uh, especially if you don't have the um, uh, visual, if you haven't watched it, what, what it does for many years. This may trick you up a little bit because what it has done here is jumped back to the previous day. On verse 7, it's talking about the 30th day, the day when the moon starts to appear. But then in verse 8, it's talking about the day previous to the day of the month or the previous to the first day of the month. It says that the moon sets with the sun. So let's go back and look at that. You have June the 6th, which would be the day in question, the day that it's talking about, the day previous to the first day of the month. And when we look there, you see the sun set time is 827. And, or that was the moon set time. We see the moon set time there at 827. But then we look at the sunset time and it's 749. But of course, we have to take into account daylight uh, the twilight hours, which means that the sun will illuminate the sky even when the moon gets really low in the sky. So in other words, it appears that they're setting together. But then on the next day, you see the sun still at 749, but the moon is setting at 927. Now, if we come back to Enoch, verse 9 says, On that night it is dark in the 14th portions, that is, in each half, but it rises on that day with one seventh portion precisely, and in its progress declines from the rising of the sun. So when we come back over and we look like look at the night of the sixth, we see that it is dark. There's nothing to be illuminated there. And then on the seventh, we start to see the time of the setting sun and the time of the setting moon actually start to deviate from one another. And they will continue to do that. Like it says there in verse nine. And verse 10 says, during the remainder of its period, its light increases to 14 portions. And that would be pointing us to the new moon on the 15th day of the month. So with this understanding of what scripture is saying and the illuminaries themselves, we can know that the new moon should be spotted. It should be seen in the night sky, in the evening sky on the evening of the 7th. With the sun setting at 749, we should be able to get a glimpse of the new moon sometime around 8.30 or so, giving us about a half hour to actually get a visual confirmation on the moon. But if you happen to miss it, just check back with this channel and or many others that should be reporting out on the new moon. But one thing to be for sure is to be sure to blow the trumpets on the new moon. We see that over in Psalms chapter 81, where it says, blow up the trumpet in the new moon and in the time appointed on the solemn feast days. So this is a very important time. We're supposed to be blowing in the new moon, blowing our trumpets, blowing our shofars. Some will be blowing whistles and our call horns just to be in compliance with this precept that we're supposed to actually blow the trumpets on the new moon and and we have to believe that it's related to what we see over in ezekiel chapter 46 when it's telling us that on the new moon the gates to the inner court are opened similar to what happens on a sabbath day so it's kind of like a sabbath day when it comes to the importance of our spirit um, because that's a time when their inner gates are open um, the gates are open to the inner court which means that there will be some spiritual communications between our spirit and our father and our father in heaven hallowed be his name so this is a time of particular importance and if you want help keeping up with these times you can go over to coachingthefight.shop. Uh, that's our online store 
where you can learn more about the celestial clock and how it works as far as the sun, the moon, and the stars. And on that website, you can get a lot of information about the celestials. You can even get a printout of the calendar that we use or publish every month. But you can also get the celestial clock calendar. Now, this is a calendar that works like a clock. It is a calendar, which means you have to keep it updated the same as a wall calendar, but it ticks like a clock. So while you have it updated, it will be helping you to keep up with the new moons as well as the feast days and the seasons that we're in. You can get this clock over at coachinthefight.shop for $19.99 while supplies last. And with that, I'm going to close this video out. If you got anything out of it, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. And Shalom.